Delivering home oxygen safely to patients is a concern for installers, gas suppliers, fire services, and regulators alike. Oxygen service providers have been educating patients about the risk of fire for decades. Despite their best efforts, though, home oxygen fires remain a material and persistent public health issue. Most COPD patients have the condition because they have smoked cigarettes for a considerable time. The addictive nature of nicotine means that it is perhaps unsurprising that up to 50% of home oxygen users continue to smoke. That means that there are currently at least 450,000 home oxygen users in the United States who could be regularly putting themselves and others at risk by smoking. So, how do home oxygen fires start? And exactly how does the lit end of a cigarette result in a flash fire that causes such devastation? We asked our research team to develop experiments to understand the mechanism and find out. This is what they found. The outside of a cigarette can burst into flames in an oxygen elevated atmosphere. The burning cigarette vaporizes the underside of the nasal cannula, releasing more fuel to mix with the oxygen. This can ignite the nasal cannula or the oxygen tubing and the resulting fire tracks back to the oxygen source at around one meter per minute. This releases toxic hydrogen chloride gas. In the US alone, it is estimated that between 100 and 150 patients die every year from fires involving home oxygen. A further 1,200 are treated in hospitals for burns. Meanwhile, around a third of fires result in a cylinder explosion, posing a serious risk to third parties, including family members, neighbors, and firefighters. The statistics are shocking, especially when you compare them with figures from other countries. In fact, studies have found that an American home oxygen patient is many times more likely to die in a home oxygen fire than elsewhere in the world. So, what are the main characteristics of the UK experience? There is a universal contract between the Department of Health and the service provider. Stakeholders work together. Every patient is protected by working smoke alarms. Finally, fire breaks, also known as thermal fuses, are required to be fitted in all oxygen patient circuits. Fire brakes are fitted by the home oxygen provider's service engineer as close to the patient as possible and close to the oxygen source. In the event of a fire, the thermal fuse breaks, triggering a simple mechanism that stops the oxygen flow and preventing it from fueling the fire. This can limit injuries and prevent patient deaths. Home oxygen fires continue to take the lives of over 100 patients and third parties every year and result in many more disfiguring and life-changing injuries. But as the UK experience shows, with the right measures and a determination to bring about change, this significant public health issue can be addressed. In fact, if similar safety measures were adopted in the US, the number of home oxygen fire deaths would not be at 100 or 150. It could be as low as five.